No, no cord. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, well, well, I'm going to take it that everyone knows exactly what to do then. Can you show what to do with update? Okay, yeah, sure. So just uh, tap on the update there, please. So basically, the update will pull up all of the libraries again. So now, if Ariel uh, wants to add more libraries, she will just go through this, and then she can select more items, and she'll click OK, and then it will automatically update uh, that. It'll automatically update that master branch with all the different libraries. Elise so, says yes. She says uh, she has yes. She has a question, but I don't know if see the question. Can you discuss the benefit of doing a master list? Gosh, um, you know, it's it's not so much an actual benefit of uh, doing a master list, but you know, as an example, uh, there are some there are some practitioners out there, there are some doctors out there that they want the ability to create one sort of global master list that has maybe five or ten or fifteen sort of categories that are associated with that one item. You know, as an example, Dr. Char, I'm not too sure if if uh, he is online, but you know, as an example, one of the uh, one of the categories or one of the master lists that he has is uh, posture, and within posture, it goes through you know everything from you know from dental work to spinal to you know I think he's got maybe fifteen or twenty different categories all related to posture. So now, in a you know with a sort of a, a quick flick or a quick switch, he can identify posture and you can see all of the items and all of the categories related to posture. Um, so to me there's not so much a benefit, it's just an ease of use, um, it's a more orga organic process, um, it enables you to organize your, your libraries uh, much more efficiently as well. You know as an example maybe someone has um, you know an immune system issue or you want to create a master library for immune. So you create that master library for immune, and then you can go through your libraries, and maybe there's you know 30 or 40 libraries that are all related to uh, that are all related to the immune system, and then you can associate all of those libraries, and then you can just window in on the immune uh, system. Does that make sense? I'll just hopefully yes. Okay. Just on a side note as well, um, for those of you that are familiar with the ability to share customized libraries. When somebody shares a library with you, um, Ariel, could you go back to the main, to the, just go back a step, please? Sure. Uh, back another step. Perfect. Okay. So as an example, for those of you that have purchased um, Ariel's libraries, when you get to this page, they will not be in the created section, they will most likely be in the shared section. So if you have a look there, Ariel, you've got the, the created and then the shared. Um, yep, there's the created and then you've got the shared library as well on the right hand side. Okay, so basically, uh, let me explain the difference between the created um, and the shared. Obviously, individuals like you know Ariel and Dr. Char, etc., they've spent a lot of time creating these libraries. Um, they are their proprietary information. It's something that, that you know they have developed and it, in some ways it is their intellectual property. So we've created the ability that when those items are actually shared, you will not be able to in turn share those with anyone else. Um, so just you know bear that in mind. The reason why I'm telling you that is more importantly is if you get those libraries from uh, from Ariel and you get to this page and they and they don't appear there, you just need to be sure that you click on the shared option and then you will find um, all of the respective libraries uh, over there. Um, I think at this stage, Ariel, perhaps what we could do is just um, go through a quick process of just showing somebody how they can actually create their own um, individual item as well. So for those of you that have the Sharks uh, Labyrinth imprinter, or well, for those of you that are familiar with uh, with Holo Linguistics, we'll take you through a quick process um, of creating um, a specific item yourself. So if we sure. just go ahead and, and click on the plus there, Ariel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just on a side note, I believe we've actually 
I left these. In other words, you don't need to fill them out now. So under the category name, Ariel, just put, I don't know, just put Ryan, Ryan item or something. And then just leave the leave the category to description blank. Go ahead and click save. Okay, and then just scroll down and look for that item, please. There we go. Go ahead and and uh, and tap on that. And then you'll see there on the bottom, um, it says items, and there are zero items. So what that means is that we have now created a library name, but now we need to add the individual items into that library. So go ahead and just tap on the zero items. And then would you like to add a new, a new item? Just put yes or OK. And then enter an item name, Ryan item 1. Okay, so, so now here you've got an option of, um, if you know the specific frequencies, you know, in other words, maybe you're familiar with uh, like Hilda Clark or Dr. Royal Ripe or, or Nina Silver, and you've got a bunch of frequencies that you actually want to add into the program for the specific item, you can either enter individual frequencies or you can do an actual frequency sweep. So just click on the, on the add frequency there, Ariel. Okay, and um, add frequency item, so just put 256. Click OK. And then add another one. Um, I don't know, any amount, 728. And just on a side note, you can be as accurate up to 0.2 decimals. So uh, it could be like 256.28 hertz. Okay, and then go to the frequency sweep, and then just do from a thousand to twelve hundred. Perfect. Okay, so basically, what we are doing now, we are programming this specific item to cycle through the respective frequencies, depending upon the time that we select. It'll spend equal proportion of time between the two frequencies and then the frequency sweep. So what this is now telling us is that, you know, if we decide to add this add this library item um, to the, the quick zap or the or the main hold tray, it will cycle through the first frequency, which is two hundred I don't know, let me expand it. So it'll be seven hundred and twenty eight hertz and then two hundred and fifty six hertz and then it'll go through a frequency sweep from 1,000 to 1,200. What that means, it'll do 1,000 hertz, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, going all the way up to, up to, uh, up to 1,200. Okay, so that's an, that is one way where you can actually add the um, individual frequencies. Ariel, if you wouldn't mind, just click on the Save button in the top right-hand corner, please. Okay, it's saved. All right, perfect. So I'm just trying to decrease my screen because I'm looking on a small little iPhone. It's not. It's rather funky. Okay, so another option is that if you have a labyrinth imprinter, or if you would like to do the holo linguistic process, the way to do that is down on the bottom. We've got an import feature. Go ahead and tap on that. Okay, now in the import feature, you need to type in the item name. So go ahead and put in Ryan Test 2 as an example. So now for those of you that have the imprinter, obviously now the imprinter would be connected. You would have your supplements um, or your homeopathic remedy or whatever it may be on the actual test plate. And you're going to go ahead and click on Ryan Test 2. Um, and then what you would do is you would click on the import now. Now there's two options. If the test plate is not connected, um, it will default to the hololinguistics. If it actually is connected, then it connects to the um, 
it connects to the labyrinth and it takes the energetic uh, signature accordingly. And then uh, once that's finished, go ahead and click on the um, add item, please. So I think just to say it again, Ryan, just so people really get it, is that again, it just defaults to whole linguistic. This is a change from the infinity, so if there's no imprinter attached, it is going to default to whole linguistics, and the import function in this case is the way to import an item. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, so that pretty much covers that. Ariel, if you wouldn't mind, just go back a, just go back a step, please. Um, I'll tell you what, actually get to the system overview page. Okay, and Ryan, so way, this is still the glitch that's happening that we talked about with those sort okay. of ghost in the machine things. Go, go ahead, though. No, okay, so what I wanted to do was just get an idea in terms of, under this person's name, which libraries are currently associated, because now my sense is that if you click on the libraries and if you want to add more libraries to this testing process, you should be able to do this, and then the begin analysis, it should appear again, and it'll then factor in the new library items. Oh, but we didn't add them. That's the only thing. Okay, so I'm just saying, uh, I, uh, in my, my to the best of my knowledge, uh, the, way okay. we have, uh, the way we have actually programmed this is that once you have added the items from your library and you've done the begin analysis, you can actually go back into your libraries, and if you wanted to add more items, you should be able to add more items, and then go back to the um, and then go back to the library page, and then run it, and then run a further scan, and it will factor in. Um, it didn't happen as of yesterday, edition. but I didn't, but I didn't have 2.6 updated. Is it a new change? Because I was working with patients yesterday, and I did have to go out of the program and come back in. So perhaps it's been added with 2.6. Well, yeah, it, it actually makes it a bit more interesting. We've got a new version this morning as well that we will be releasing. Um, we've addressed some of the bugs, and there's been one predominant bug that we've had um, specifically with the progressive insights, the functional zones, entangled insights, um, as well as items that you... So basically, if, if you add items from the program, um, you know, throughout the respective panels, into the progressive insights, the main whole tray. If you add the functional zones, the entangled insights, as well as the libraries, what we are finding is that after a 20 to 30 minute window, um, the system, it's still generating the frequencies, but it actually freezes up. I believe we have fixed it. I haven't been able to check it. Um, however, I will be releasing uh, that update today. If it is not fixed, please just let me know. Um, however, you know, as I mentioned, we, we've actually finally been able to, uh, to replicate this bug, um, and that was largely due to, uh, to Wendy Phelps. So, Wendy, if you're on the call, thank you so much, and, you know, we hear you, and we're on to this, so thank you. Um, I think with that said, is, are there any other questions that people have, or I know we have to get going soon, and I've got to do my coffee date with you as well, so. Hello? You got a bunch of questions, Ryan, but I think it'd be better at this point if we pick up those questions that, you, that people have on the Monday night call, and actually we switch things over to you to do the raffle and talk about other things you want to talk about today. Perfect. Okay. Could you just pull up our website, uh, Quantum Health Apps, please? Sure. So for those gonna, of, just so you know, at 1045, I'm going to need to... That's fine. Okay. You can down and dash. Okay. So do you want me to leave that page? You know, if you, yeah, if you could, I'll, I'll just sort of... I'll just navigate you where to go, and then oh, we should be good. It won't take long. Okay. So for those, of, so for those of you that are involved with Facebook, um, please, if I'm um, an appeal to you, get involved with our our Thanksgiving uh, raffle that we're having. Um, we every Friday, starting next Friday, we're going to be doing a, a weekly raffle. We are giving away anything from a free. $200 surround sound Bluetooth speaker that can, that can connect with your genius to power banks, to, to geo harnesses, to all those weird and wonderful products that we have. We will be raffling them off with the first raffle starting uh, this week Friday. Anyone can enter, anyone can win. It's really super simple. 
Um, Ariel, in the top right-hand corner, you've got like a little red thing there. Just go ahead and tap on that, please. So for those of you that want to get involved and want to see how you can be eligible for this, uh, go to our website, which is uh, quantumhealthapps.com, and then in the top right-hand corner, we've got like a, uh, like a, a, a little flap, and you can uh, scroll through that. But the process is really, really simple. If you refer anyone to purchase the Genius Insight, any of our packages, you immediately get 10 raffle tickets. The purchaser gets, uh, uh, gets 10 raffle tickets. If you do a Facebook post on your own Facebook post, on your own Facebook page, not on the Quantum Health apps, but on your Facebook post, uh, on your Facebook page and say, hey, get involved, learn more about the Genius Insight, download the free trial. You get tickets allocated accordingly. If you send out an email, just send us that email as, um, as a verification or a validation and you can earn yourself raffle tickets. Look, at the end of the day, you know, we as a company, you know, we obviously thrive on sales. It helps us to continue with the software development. And for you as the end user, you know, I'm sure you want to get your friends and family involved and, uh, you know, fellow practitioners involved. It's great for them. It's good for you. So please, you know, go through the information, have a look, reach out to me or any of the distributors. Uh, we have had a few calls uh, with this beforehand, so they are very familiar with um, how the raffle process will work. The only caveat is that every Friday, every Friday at 10.30, um, as of next week Friday, um, we'll be doing the raffle. However, in order to be eligible, you do need to actually be on the call. It'll be a 10 or 15 minute call, so when we read out the number, if the number belongs to you, um, you know, you need to be able to put your hand up. So that's the only thing that we ask. So with that said, I'm going to end off. But again, everyone, thank you very much for your time. I apologize if I was a bit all over the place with the libraries. Um, the libraries do take a bit of understanding. It's been a real complex um, thing for us to program in the first place. And equally, even trying to explain it, um, I know it can be a real tongue twister. My only suggestion to you um, is to spend some time with the libraries, keep an eye out on the update which will be coming out today, have a look at them, work through the master category list, um, join us on the call on uh, Monday and I'm sure we can spend some more time um, on that as well. But Ariel, thanks so much for hosting this and for those of you that have joined us, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ryan, and everyone have a great weekend. See you on Monday and remember the next Friday is the first raffle, so be sure to mark your calendar for Black Friday. Save some time in that shopping day, 10.30 Pacific time. We'll be drawing a lot of great prizes. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, Abana. Hey,